Hello and welcome back to my adventure map and today we're going to be looking at a technique that I'm using to create sort of custom dimensions and custom realms in vanilla Minecraft. So without having to use the nether portal we can go to different areas and basically convincingly say it's a different realm. But of course it's not really, we're just using some little tricks to make it seem like that way. Alright, so what we're going to do is hop into a portal. And as you can see, we get the sort of molding screen thing. We get teleported. And we're back. We're in this sort of ice realm dimension that I'm using as part of my map. Um, and you can go back. There we go. Screen's wobbling again. Like so. And it's an all round, generally quite good effect, I think doesn't really require much either and we'll have a look at that in a second so I'm gonna hop over to another world and show you how to build it alright so I've built another portal in this world and we're gonna be using this as a demonstration um, just to create our own little portal it's not really gonna go anywhere specific because it's just in like a little testing world but anyway you go come behind the portal when you want to start making this thing and just move to a little bit of a different area oh god don't want to do that um, the water is there literally just for effect and so is the red block of redstone in fact you could do this without any sort of teleporter if you really pleased um, but it's all for the effect really so um, uh, let's go ahead and what we're going to do is going to take any mob of your choosing actually let's move this up a little move this up to here so you're going to take any more of your choosing and you're just going to plonk it down there. But first sort of barricade it off a little. So let's get some fences. Just so that our sheep can't move. Now you don't have to use sheep. You can use absolutely anything you want. It's just for the spawner. Right. So plonk your sheep down in there. And he's going to be giving off a redstone signal now. And what you're going to do is you're going to go into dispenser. And just put a dispenser right there. Pointing into that block. Now you can hook that up. There's nothing in the dispenser yet. We're going to get to that in a second. What you're going to also want to do. Is come out again from this. from this place here and just create a sort of line like this now again, you need 15 repeaters all set to full delay so there's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and there, okay, like that 1, 2, 3, 4 Five. That works quite well. Now this should be approximately a six second delay. So what you're going to want to do now is come to your portal, step inside the portal and press F3 to bring up the coordinates. Now you can type in the chat, this is a useful little technique that I used to use, and you can just type all of the coordinates you see. So we see 608. 62 minus 125 now go back round to here and put a command block here now go to tp at player which is the at p parameter or target and then we're going to set some more parameters and we're going to go we're just going to type in the coordinates that we wrote down so 608 comma 62 comma minus 125 comma so that's the coordinates but then you can also set a radius parameter so only people within a certain radius of that block will be picked up so I'm going to say in a, in a three block radius of the place that we put there and then you're going to do close square brackets and now you have to decide where you're going to teleport your people to so you're going to have to create your alternative dimension and such 
but I have another video on that because it involves using World Painter, which isn't a complicated program. It's just something that I'm not going to cover in this video. So if you want to see that, check out another one of my videos. Anyway, this is going to be our alternative dimension. Uh, <laughs> it's hardly anything too fancy. Um, it's just a sort of block. So we're going to take the coordinates of here as well. Got can hardly see it, but I believe we've got 608 again. 62 minus 102. If I can see that correctly, I believe it is. Looks about right. Anyway, jump back over here, and we're going to enter the coordinates for that in now. So 608, 62 minus 102. So pretty much done setting up all the redstone now. Now we have to go into MC Edit. So before we do that, actually, we're going to put a splash potion in here. But let's do that now then. All right, so I'm here in MC Edit, and that red block over there by the wooden block that represents our sheep entity. Um, so we'll deal with that in a second. First, let's do the easy part. Let's come over to the dispenser double click it slowly to select go down to filter now you're going to need um, Seth Bling's modified potions filter and a few others that I'm going to be going over in this video so there'll be a link in the description to go download that um, so modify modify potions and you're going to choose nausea and you're going to want to set that to a fairly high level say 10 and then you want to set the duration to about 12 seconds and then you hit filter and then that's done so you needed to do with the potion Actually, I lied. It's not all you need to do with the potion. Double click the container real quickly and go down to count. Where it says count, set that to minus one. Now, the reason this works is when a dispenser dispenses an item, it tries to deduct one from the count. Now, it does that until the count value is zero and zero only. So if the count value is below zero, hence minus one, it will keep deducting one from the count value infinitely. It will never reach zero, so you'll never run out of items. It's basically an infinite source, and it's quite a neat little technique. Anyway, now let's deal with this sheep over here. Let's go to filter, and what we're going to do is we're going to use the change mob properties filter. And all you're going to do is come over to the first parameter, the health parameter, and set it to zero. That's all you need to do. Hit filter. Now we're going to do create spawners. So let's have a look for that. Where's the create spawners filter? Um, there we go. So create spawners and you need include position data. Hit filter. All right, so now we've got our spawner here. Now all you need to do is go back to the select option. Hit the green nudge button to move it around. Now you want to move it so that it's sort of directly underneath the portal. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, nudge this way. That looks about right. Okay. So it's sitting right there. Now you're going to go back to your filter tab. And you're going to go to change spawner properties. Set the minimum spawn delay to 1. Maximum spawn delay to 1. The spawn count doesn't matter, Just leave it at 1. Entity cap, leave it at 6. And the detection range is the next big thing you want to do. And you're going to set that from 16 to 2. And what that would do is make sure that only if people are within 2 blocks of this spawner, it will spawn a sheep. So let's hit filter. And then we can save. We're pretty much done here now. Unless I've forgotten something, which I don't think I have. Um, that sounds pretty good. Let's exit back into Minecraft. Alright, so I'm back in Minecraft, and um, as you can see, the sheep's gone. I removed the fences manually, and there's a spawner over there. But we're not doing anything to the spawner because we're not within two blocks. We also have our nausea potion in there. Right, so the idea is when we get two blocks within that spawner, it's going to spawn a sheep here. The sheep will give a splash potion, which will basically give the nausea effect to anyone standing within the vicinity and it will also about six seconds later teleport us over there 
So let's give that a little test. Is it working? Doesn't seem to be working. Let's have a look at the spawner. Oh, right. Okay. So I know what's wrong. What we need to do is if you've used sheep like I have, which probably wasn't the best choice, you're going to need to just put a bit of grass around the spawner. There you go. The reason for that is because sheep and other domestic sort of animals require grass to spawn. Fairly simple, not too difficult to understand. Right, so everything seems to be working now. Jump into the portal. We get our effect and we're teleported. Awesome. Alright, so it's about the end of the video. Before I go, I just want to show you this quick little tool which is quite useful for creating extra little effects. It's called Biome Painter, and it will allow you to change the biomes of your certain regions, hence allowing your sort of alternate di dimensions to have a bit of a different feel to them. Now, the most prominent one is the Sky Biome and the Hell Biome, and I've demonstrated on my world. I've just gone ahead and applied some of these. So basically, you just go around, you select, you edit, and you fill in the selected biomes. It's fairly straightforward to use. Just download the program, there'll be a link in the description and have a little muck around with it yourself. But here's some of the results that I just quickly created. As you can see, we've got three sort of intersecting biomes. Here we've got the sky biome. Now it's interesting because if we walk into this biome, this is the mushroom island biome, you can see that it's actually, in fact, daytime. Now it looks like I'm cutting the video, but I'm not. This is sort of a completely twilight dimension I suppose if I go time set night oh god you can get quite a good effect so just time set night you can see that looks pretty pretty damn awesome and if we jump over into this one it still looks quite cool but that looks a bit more awesome and of course there's the obvious change of grass color quite a useful tool I just thought I'd introduce it to you and that's about it for this video. I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.